events. Now before we can have a look at events, I want to take a look at Etherscan to explain why events are so important. Events gives us a way to track what's happening inside of the contract. So on Etherscan here, if we go to the token other information, we should see more tabs down here and especially an events tab. If we go here, we could see that four days ago and approve for all event kicked off. And if we go down, here's a transfer event. And if we expand one of these events, we can see some parameters that's attached to each event. For example, this transfer event, we can see that it has a from address, a to address and a token ID. And this is essentially saying where this token was sent to or transferred. And this is great because at a glance, we can see what's been happening to this contract and what actions has been performed. Now we can add these events in our code as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Now here we are back at our pizza contract. I'm going to simply remove this order over here because that came from the previous example and we'll use this function which implements this custom error. Events are kind of implemented the same way as errors. So it means that we need to define an event first. So here at the top, I'm going to define an event by writing the event keyword, and then we need to come up with an event. Now, I think if a user places an order, we should kind of have an event for that. An event's name should be descriptive enough. So what we could do is say we have an order, and then we can just say order placed, for example. We put our brackets, and then we get to specify some of the parameters that we want to record in our event. So what parameters will be useful for us to know from an order that's been placed? Well, firstly, I would like to have the address of the user that placed the order. And secondly, maybe we also capture this uint of the pizza selection. And now let's take a look if we need anything else. Well, we also have this order count, which is pretty cool. And I might need this in the future to kind of track the order and see if it is even delivered or not. So I'm actually going to add this in here as well. So it's going to be the user who made the order, the order count, the ticket number, so to speak, and then the pizza selection that they order maybe a small, medium or large. Okay, great. So we have our first event. Now what I'm going to do is simply duplicate this event. And I want to create another event and this will be for our delivered function. Here I'm just simply saying that this is delivered and I'm going to require that we send in this order number. We don't care the user because we can track that in our orders, remember? And maybe just for consistency, we refer to this order count up here as the order number as well. And that is it for defining the event. Now events can have as many parameters as you need, but there is a good way of kind of tracking down and filtering events once the contract is deployed. And that's by indexing some of the parameters and you index the most important ones. Now you can have, I believe up to three indexes. So for example, the user is going to be important for me to maybe filter through. So what I'm going to do is add the index keyword before the actual name and maybe I also want to index the order number. For delivered I might want to index this one. The pizza selection is not that important to me so I'm not going to index that. However technically I can because I am allowed up to three indexes per event. Okay so now that our events have been defined how do we actually call them? Well to call an event we need to use something called emit. Now we have the events and when something happens in our code and we feel this is the right time to emit an event, we can simply call the emit keyword. And a good example after uh, doing all the operations in the place order, maybe would be here uh, before we return. So we can write emit and then what do we want to emit? We want to emit the order placed. So you specify it like this. And now we need to pass in the parameters. So we know we need the user and that we can simply get by passing in message.sender. 
The next parameter is the order number. And this I can simply get from this order count. And the last one is the pizza selection, which of course I can just take from the one that was passed in. And now you can see this is a valid emit event and it will perfectly be fine. For our delivered over here, we can do the same. Maybe we can even do it before or after the assert. I'm going to do it after. We can specify that we want to call the delivered event and the thing we need to pass in is the order number. Now, this is how this will look. Wonderful. So now we finally know how to actually define our events and emit them using the emit keyword in the corresponding functions. Now, each function does not have to have an event. These events are reserved for the functions that matter to your business use case or your contract and things you want to track. And that's when you want to use an event. Now, we will see how our events look when we eventually deploy this contract on the blockchain and we will be able to track our contract and see who placed an order and if it was delivered.